about yesterday Your smile, your star so fly My, oh my As time stood Hi there, I'm Jackie. Thanks for clicking on today's video. This is my channel, Heart and Apron, where you can find all kinds of creative homemaking. Today, though, it's all about St. Patrick's Day, and I have tons of fun to share with you. I hope that you will stick around because I'm going to start out by showing you some DIY decor ideas. Then I'm going to take you along with me as we decorate my house to not a ton of stuff, but just enough to give it that extra oomph for your St. Patrick's Day and to make my holiday a little bit extra. And then I'm going to show you a fun but simple St. Patrick's Day game. And I'm also going to be taking you back to the kitchen with me where I'm going to share my corned beef and cabbage tips as well as take an American classic, the apple pie, but give it a little bit of a Celtic spin so that it is perfect for your St. Patrick's Day fun. Now, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell because it'll let you know every time a new video is coming your way. Let's go ahead and get these DIYs started.
fun. Don't forget to let me know what you think of them down below. I'd love to hear your opinions on them. I'm very excited. I think that they're just going to add so much to my decor this year. Now, really quick though, a couple tips towards decorating. For somebody who maybe wonders, how can you decorate for all of these holidays? The biggest trick is, I do a lot of DIYs. Second, I don't go out and spend a whole bunch every year. I kind of accumulatively collect pieces and I try to go for things that I feel like would be timeless. There are some things in my buckets that I'm like, yeah, I liked you yesterday, I don't like you today, but for the most part, I am able to reuse the items and I kind of go hit those clearances afterwards so that I can find some pieces that maybe I couldn't afford at full price, but when they are 50 to 70% off, heck yeah, add them to the cart, I'm there. So that's how I like to get my decor pieces done. I also start saving up a little bit in advance. I get an idea of what I want and I buy little pieces at a time so that it is not a big chunk out of my budget if there is something that I wanna buy. So just a couple tips from me to you on how to decorate your house without breaking the budget. But let's go ahead and get this decor started. Yes, I'm drinking. We're like one and without you I'm sinking. I'm always shining next to you. There's no reason to Chasing pavement on my own Cause you're here to stay Every night and day I'm delighted cause I got you I have always been afraid of changes But you show me life is full of faces Sometimes clouds got in our favorite places but we were young and unaware Oh, I got you, there's no reason to Chasing payment on my own Cause you're here to stay every night and day I'm delighted cause I got you Bothering. Every day we dance and life's been smiling We're not young, still drunk in love Oh, I got you, there's no reason to Chasing payment on my own Cause you're here to stay every night to do. 
for St. Patrick's Day. Do you guys make corned beef and cabbage? Do you celebrate it all? Um, for me, I feel like every year we make ourselves some corned beef and cabbage and I always have these two movies that every year I watch. I like to watch The Legend of the, the Magical Legend of the Leprechauns, which is kind of like a twist on Romeo and Juliet, but instead it's fairies and leprechauns. I watched this as a TV movie special when I was a teenager and kid and I just absolutely loved it and it's still something that I treasure today. And speaking of a retro fave, I also watch Leprechaun because what better day to watch Leprechaun than St. Patrick's Day, right? So yeah, those are some of the traditions that my family like to do, but I would love to hear about what you and your family like to do. So please don't forget to comment down below and I can't wait to see what you write. Now, we're gonna be talking about corn beef and cabbage tips up next. tip if you are going to be making corned beef and cabbage this year is to pay attention to your cut. You will find that corned beef is available in two different cuts, point cut and flat cut. And I remember when I was younger, I really didn't understand what this meant. Well, if you like a fattier meat, go for the point cut. If you like to have a nice lean meat that is going to be picture worthy, you want to go for your flat cut. Now this year I couldn't find any flat cut available, but I that is my number one thing. If you can find the flat cut, you will save yourself time. Now it always does cost a little bit more than the point, but you make up for it in the time that you are not trying to get fat and like all that away from your meat so that you can enjoy it more. So that is my number one tip when it comes to corn beef and cabbage. It can make or break your dinner. Just the cut. Okay, so tip number two, rinse your meat. This is not something that everybody does with corned beef and cabbage, but I find that it is absolutely essential because corned beef is already pretty salty, right? So if you don't rinse your meat, sometimes you might end up with an overly salty mess. So you're going to want to put it into the sink and you kind of just continue to rinse it until it doesn't have honestly like a slimy feel anymore. And that is from the brine. Don't worry, there's nothing wrong with it. But once you start to feel that that brine is gone, it is time to throw it into your pot. Which brings me to my next tip. I have tried to cook this in cast iron pot, which is my absolute favorite. I've also tried it in the instant pot and a normal pot. Nothing beats a cast iron pot for your corned beef and cabbage. It just cooks it the most evenly and I have absolutely no problems. Every year I end up using my cast iron pot. I have tried those other ones in years in between and I just always feel like I get a subpar like product out of it. Especially, you know, they told me I could do it in my Instant Pot. Mm -mm. No, you can't. Not, not getting the same quality 
that you would out of a good cat or pot. So let's just talk about how to cook this in general. So once you have your corned beef in your pot, you are going to fill up the water just right up to that fat line on the top of your corned beef. And yeah, I said fat because every single one of them is going to have a layer of fat on top and you always want to make sure that that is on top when you are cooking it in the pan. And so you're just going to put the water up to there. You're going to put it onto the stove at medium high in the beginning until you bring it up to a boil and then put it on low, throw the lid on, and you're just going to let it cook for like ever. And it is really that easy. You do not have to add the cabbage and potatoes, but you can. And I'm going to show you exactly how I add those. But if you do that and you put it in your cast iron pot and you just keep an eye on it every like 45 minutes to an hour for the first like two thirds of your cooking time, if you go and just make sure you add just a little bit of extra water, your corned beef is going to turn out perfect every time. So you cook corned beef for 50 minutes for every pound of corned beef. Now mine was I think 3.8 pounds, so I ended up cooking it for a little bit over three hours and 15 minutes. And at about the last 30 minutes is when I open it up and I put in my skinned and cut potatoes. And then once the it is actually done, that's when I take out my corned beef and I add my cabbage. And that is because I'm not one of those people that likes overly cooked cabbage. Actually, like I'm really against it. It gets like weird sliminess and I, no. So I just like mine lightly steamed. If you like your cabbage cooked a little bit more, you might want to put it in when you add those potatoes. But for me, I put them in, after I take the corned beef out, I let it cook for another 15 minutes while I'm cutting that meat up and letting it sit and everything is ready to go. I also sprinkle my potatoes with a little bit of garlic salt so they have some extra flavor. And this one pot meal is ready and absolutely fantastic and I'm sure your family's gonna love it. You are the love I can't show you how to start to find your way I like the old fashioned way Give me that sweet love Those warm up and kisses oh. your home or if you have any other tips that you'd like to share with everybody don't forget to write them in the comments and I hope that these tips help you to make the best corned beef ever now up next I'm going to show you how to make an apple pie but we're going to be doing a little bit of a Celtic spin on it we're going to be using two sets of pie crusts so four individual pie crusts and we're going to make it into a Celtic knot and then we'll add some rainbow sprinkles on top and glitter of course so make sure to stay tuned. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button down below, I hope that you will consider joining my YouTube family and do so right now. Let's get cooking. We are gonna start out by prepping our apples. And I have this little device here that actually takes out the core as well as spiral cuts them. It is so helpful. But because we're doing a really intricate design with this dessert, we are gonna chop them down a little bit finer. And you're gonna notice my camera kind of moves a little bit. I'm sorry, when I'm cutting the dog thinks it is the most interesting thing going on, even though like they are not even in the interested in apples. They still like come over and move my camera constantly. But once this is done, we're just gonna add a dash of sugar and cinnamon, mix them up, and it is time to work with our dough. As I mentioned to you earlier, we are going to be using two packages of pie crusts. 
And if you haven't bought these before, there are actually two crusts within each package. And we cut them down the center and I'm attempting to make them into one long stripe of pie crust essentially. So I'm just gonna mend it as well as I can with my fingers. And then we're gonna make a sugar mixture that we are gonna be using in all of these crusts. So I use two tablespoons of brown sugar, two tablespoons of white sugar, and one teaspoon of cinnamon and mix it up really, really well. And then we're just going to lightly add a quarter of this mixture down this pie crust. And then it is time to take your apple mixture we worked on earlier, and we are going to be putting a quarter of that mixture down this as a stripe as well. And then you take one tablespoon of butter cut into chunks and you are going to put it periodically through the apples and roll this little pie crust up into a tube. I'm actually going to be making four of them today and so that you don't see me have to do the same thing over and over again, I'm just going to go ahead and snap them in and then I'm going to show you how I weave these into a Celtic knot. So I'm gonna do my best to show you a step-by-step -step of how I weaved this together. It's basically like just a wet basket weave and you just kind of take it one step in section at a time. You will see that there were some apple casualties. I did my best. Either way, it tasted fantastic and I still feel like it looked like a Celtic knot. Let me know what you think down below. After this, we are going to bring in some rainbow sprinkles and gold glitter, of course, because that's just who I am and I hope that you really enjoy this recipe. We are gonna be cooking this at 325 degrees until it got golden. I did not know how long to cook this as this was the first time that I've ever made this. But I will show you how this turned out as well as the rest of my dinner in just a second and then it's time for a taste test. potatoes are just mushy enough but not too mushy and the cabbage is just lightly steamed exactly like I like it. I hope that these tips will help you to have your corned beef and cabbage just be out of the wor this world this year. Let me know if you use any of my tips. Okay so let's go ahead and try the pie. Tastes just like that apple pie like classic but I love that it has that St. Patrick's Day twist and that the knot turned out, you guys. That got me so excited. Let me know if you guys decide to try any of these and don't forget to take pictures on Instagram and let me know what you think and tag me. I would love to see your adventures into the St. Patrick's Day fun. Now, also, if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, you know what to do. Hit the bell down below. And also, I hope you just have an absolutely magical day. I'm gonna go ahead and close it out here, guys, but I'll see you soon.